Hello, my name is Irma Muñiz, and I'm here to speak to you on behalf of my husband, Ramsey Muñiz. I speak to you because my husband is currently incarcerated for crimes that he did not commit. He is incarcerated for life without parole, and I feel like many Americans, um, our politicians, our citizens, can certainly identify with this type of thing because many times there are errors made in the judicial process. This man that I speak of, however, is a very special person because of his history in America. Ramsey was very much involved in the Chicano Civil Rights Movement, and he helped many people get ahead through the political arena. He ran for governor of Texas twice, in 1972 and in 1974, and in the process, he helped many people. He helped many people who had no representation to gain a voice in the political process. That was profound. Well, as he made progress for many people, he also encountered difficulties, and today he is in prison for life without parole. He is innocent of all the charges committed against him, and what I am trying to do through this video is bring about the awareness of a man that contributed greatly to humanity and remains imprisoned where he shouldn't have been sent from the very beginning. Many people are given consideration for what they accomplished in their lifetimes. And when he encountered legal problems, rather than being given consideration for what he did for others, he was sent to the furthest penitentiaries in the country. He has suffered greatly. He has suffered immensely. Never had a chance to see his family, never had a chance to see attorneys, and therefore never had a chance to prove his innocence. As I already mentioned, my husband is in life, in prison for life without parole for crimes that he did not commit. Just recently, after 13 years of the harshest prisons, he was finally transferred back to Texas because this transfer was something that he actually merited because of his good behavior. Because he's a beautiful person who, by the way, has never done one violent thing in his life. He was moved back to Texas with the assistance of congressmen senators, organizations such as LULAC, GI Forum, and many others for whom we are all very grateful. He was sent back to Texas, and it was just several months after that that they took him away and transferred him out of the state again. Why did they do this? Because this is very political. That is why they did this. And so we are bringing this to the attention of people. We need the help the continued help of senators, of congressmen, of organizations, spiritual leaders, and individuals who feel like they want to make a difference in their lives for the sake of somebody who merits that difference. My husband is one of those people, and I am here appealing before you. Just know that there is a tremendous amount of support that is growing throughout the Southwest. We do have support from people, as I mentioned, in California, in Colorado, in New Mexico, in New York. And that support continues to grow because many people recognize Ramsey for the person that he is and for the great contributions that he has made for the sake of humanity. He's a very beautiful person. Therefore, I want to appeal to you and ask you to become involved. Get organizations that you uh, are involved with to become involved in this case. We will need letters sent to congressmen, senators, to the president, because it is time that this case be investigated and that this innocent man be given a chance to be released from prison. He is 65 years old, and he certainly merits the same type of opportunity that is given other people who have made great contributions in their lives. I ask you to learn more about this case by going to www.freeramsey.com. Thank you so much for your help. I would, I would like to uh, also once again thank all, all of the individuals that continue to be involved in the Committee to Free Me from this uh, mode of darkness that I find myself in. I know that I haven't spoken much about my case, and there's a reason for it, and uh, the reason for that is because uh, uh, there's a certain 
a group of attorneys and constitutional scholars that are in the process of uh, opening my case again. Uh, there's no question about the uh, injustice that was committed against me, especially in this last case. Prosecution of misconduct, the uh, uh, withholding of uh, evidence to the very end of the trial where the, uh, where the federal judge threatened the uh, government with a uh, contempt of court, not given us sufficient time for, for investigation and uh, preparation of the case after we found the evidence that they had uh, withheld from us. There was a certain, there was a certain person, and this is the first time that I speak about this publicly, that had dealt with the U.S. government. And he was arrested by the government. The person had contacted our office in order to hire our office to represent his brother who was incarcerated at that time in California. We, we eventually contacted the authorities in California, found out about his case, and when he came back to us, we told him how much it was going to, I mean, how much it was going to cost for us to get into the case. He told us that he would come back and speak to us and then came back, and little did we know that he was trying to enter into a drug deal with the U.S. government, that he didn't know was the U.S. government. When, when he was arrested, he expressed that he was talking to me about the case, and one thing led to another, and next thing I know, that individual is talking to me about doing this and doing that, and I told him that we were not that we were not into that. The rest you will find as part of the trial proceedings. I was arrested. That particular person was a material witness to our case. At the time of my arrest, he was put in an airplane and he flew to Mexico. We did not of that particular part of the case until the last days of the trial because we knew there was some part that was missing. And finally, my attorney, DeGuerin, uh, asked the court to put the government witnesses on the stand. And one or two of them perjure themselves about not knowing anything about it. And finally, the judge was going to hold them in contempt and made them bring that particular part of the evidence before us. And it stated where this particular person had entered into a conspiracy and blah, 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 and this and that. And that's part of the trial that we're trying to get back to. I am not guilty of the charges that I was charged with. For what the government had, my sentence was a death sentence. I have been sentenced to life sentence without parole. I have never in my life carried a weapon, nor have I ever been charged with assault or battery or the murder of anyone. And yet, I was given a life sentence without parole, which in, which in reality is a death sentence. I will continue to fight for my liberation, but most importantly, I want the people out there to know that I will continue to struggle for the liberation of my people. That first and foremost. Because if my people were free out there today, I will be free tomorrow. I want to thank you with my heart. 
with me today. And again, I want to thank my loving family and my loving wife for being the Mexicana that she is, for being brave, for being valiente to know what is right and what is wrong. And I myself uh, want to tell you that I appreciate the opportunity that you've presented to me today. And it's been an honor to interview you. And that I'd like to thank you, hermano. Muchas gracias. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Gracias.